Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just brought us the first part of Wisdom for Life. Hello, Pastor Ken. Hello. Hi, so today we talked about anger um, and these answers to life's questions. And so we did have a question come in, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, Absolute perfect sermon for my life, um, but this person wants to know, how do you really let go of anger for someone who has wronged you daily for years and years? Sure. Well, yeah, and that's a, a very real problem, especially when there's been abuse uh, that's gone on and for years and years and, and, and this sort of thing. A couple of thoughts come to mind. First of all, I think we have to go back to the gospel again and again and again and not making light of the questioner's reality. I'm sure that there has been abuse and that it was real and it is painful. Um, so I'm not making light of that at all. But that said, Here's the reality. All of us have sinned against others daily. And all of us have sinned against God um, daily. What does he do? He continues to pour out his grace upon us. And so even the instance where the the, uh, person goes up to Jesus and says, how many times should I forgive? And he says, seven, because he's thinking, man, I'm swinging for the fence now. And Jesus says, no, 70 times 7. In other words, just ongoingly, you're just going to continue to forgive. Why? Because that, Jesus is saying, is what I'm doing for you. Um, I think of the story that comes from the life of Corey Tim Boom, who uh, was, of course, persecuted during the World War II, got carted off to... Auschwitz concentration camp along with her sister, I believe it was, and her father went to a different one and they were trying to protect the Jewish people mm-hmm. in their Christian home, in their hiding place in the, behind the, the secret wall that they had. And finally they were found out by the Gestapo and, and carted off to the concentration camps. And, uh, and she, as I recall, her sister did not survive, but she survived and she came out and began speaking all around the world and became a very uh, well-known figure in the 70s, um, giving her Christian testimony for faith from those years of being in a concentration camp. One of the more memorable stories that she would write about was the one where she was speaking in some country and after she had talked all about Jesus and told her story and, and inspired the masses people were standing in line to come up and shake her hand. And she wrote about how she caught out of the corner of her eye, she glimpsed a person who was waiting in line who she recognized as a guard who had, you know, done unthinkable things in the concentration camp to her and her sister. And instantly she writes about how I was processing this person, but I was thinking, I don't want to shake his hand, you know, and yet he's getting closer and closer. And finally, um, it was his turn and he held out his hand and she writes about how in that moment she said, Lord, I don't have the will to do it, but I'm going to just uh, put my trust in you and you give me the strength. You give me the grace to hold out my hand. And she says it was just like an electric pulse just came through her and she grabbed his hand and embraced it. And he said, "Um, I worked at Auschwitz and you know, but she had love in her heart for him, notwithstanding all of the despicable things that he had been part of. So really quite a good story of, I think, uh, illustrating this 70 times seven um, and the reality that ultimately we're called to just continue 
to live out the gospel that we've experienced. No matter how hard it is. No matter how hard it is. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so in the same question too, if I'm the person who is on the receiving end of someone's anger, sure. someone's angry at me and yeah. demonstrating anger towards me, how, how do I handle that? Yeah, well, right, because that's an awkward situation. Of course, uh, Matthew 5 says, if you sense that your brother or your sister have something against you, you go to them. And so I'd say start there and say, hey, sister, brother, let's sit down and have a chat. I am sensing something's not right here and I, I want to know what have I done wrong? What do I need to fix? Uh, have I hurt you? Uh, do I owe you an, an apology? Do I, you know, help me know what I don't know, what I'm not seeing. Um, now, he, and, and, and hopefully, Lord willing, that can lead to some sense of resolution and get some things out on the table and realize, you know, it was all a misunderstanding and it's all good and everything's happy again. Sometimes, though, that's not the outcome. Sometimes a person, they're you may just have somebody who's just out to get you and they, they're going to be angry at you and they, maybe they envy something about you or what your life represents and it just, it's, they're not going to even come clean if, if and when you do talk with them and ask them forthrightly, could we get this ironed out? I think that's where uh, the passage, there's a passage in Romans um, chapter 12, starting in verse uh, 18 that I think is really good. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Um, well, what's it saying there? It's saying, hey, you know, as far as it depends on you, here's, here's the reality. In any relationship, it takes two to tango. And so your heart may be right, you may be clean and pure and um, transparent and forgiving and w transparent, all those things. But if the other person isn't, then you, you, can't, you can't put them in a headlock, you mm -hmm. can't, make, can't them. make them. So as far as it depends uh, on you, um, you live at peace with everyone. And then you just have to trust God is going to break through and do something in his heart or her heart that's, uh, that you can't bring about because it's his heart or her heart. Yeah. Okay, so let's just say you're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. You're just tired and you think, I can't do this. I can't handle my anger. I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. um, can do not have the willpower to overcome my emotions yeah. that I'm feeling today. Right. How do I handle that? Well, well, probably two things right off. Let me just speak from my own experience. Here's how I handle it at this juncture. First of all, I try to make sure I'm not going to do anything irreversible. So get out in front of it. If that means walk off by yourself, close the door, go in the bathroom, <laughs> just go by yourself so that you can minimize the damage before it's done. Um, that's probably the first thing. And then the, the second thing then is I think it, it comes back to the gospel of what God has done for us in Jesus, that great verse that we looked at in Ephesians 4.32. Um, even as God has in Christ forgiven you. You're going to be kind and compassionate and tenderhearted to other people. So we have to go back and re-gospel our own hearts. And as we're sitting there in the bathroom or in our closet or in our study or our office. office and saying, I'm not going to go and just explode all over this person, we have to remember, okay, I'm a sinful person. I am a wicked person. God has shown me grace. He's shown me favor. How many times? Countless times. And he died on the cross for me so that I could have life. And then he melts my heart and says, now with that melted heart, I want you to handle others. 
And so I think we have to realize it, it's more than a willpower thing. It's more than, okay, I'm just going to psych myself out and just, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to handle it this time. Well, you probably won't. None of us have that much willpower. That's where we have to have something transformational that's the reminder of the gospel touching us again and, and transforming us, and softening our hearts before we do our interactions with somebody else. Great. Well, I heard many times today people coming up saying this issue really is big for me and this touched me. And so this Wisdom of Life series has many of those things in them. So enjoyed the one on anger today and look forward to next week as we start part, go to part two of Wisdom for Life. And so thank you for your questions and for joining us here at Postscript. We'll see you back next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.